Okay. I thought that there's another lesson that is not on Fast Tracker and is about sampling and is important. And I think most of you who make music do not understand uh, really what it means to have a vocabulary of samples. Uh, there's, you can find a word for that defines a lot of sounds that are useful for the same purpose. I, I found out that you can make such, such a language and it makes working with samples much easier and faster. So, uh, I, I want to, this is not like a full list, there are many other things, but uh, um, I think maybe this will give you some sort of uh, intuition as to what it means to create a sample bank as opposed to what it means to have a preset for some VST instrument or synthesizer. Okay, so um, I said there's a <laughs> I said there's a bass riff. So let's say we have a bass riff. This one I took from uh, I look, most samples here are either from uh, some Nine Inch Nails production or Skinny Puppy. It doesn't matter. So this is a bass. Now I don't know if you hear it with this kind of quality, but it's a hiss over the sound. So you make one with the hiss because sometimes the hiss is necessary for uh, you don't know what. You don't want to clean the hiss all the time. Maybe you need a hiss. Can be sure. So uh, yeah, you get it filtered. Oh, never mind. It's a different riff. Uh, now you ha you have uh, if you have a riff, then you can uh, like make a band pass of it. Let's say this one. And then okay, you can have it also like. Uh, And uh, you can have it also distorted. So what you get is B BSRF, BSRF filter, BSRF dist, BSRF FX, BSRF BP. Uh, if you know what that means to you, then when searching through the sample bank, you know what to, f what, what to look for. Okay, so now you have BD, bass drum. Bass drum. Now you can have also BD floor. This is like a floor drum. Uh, you can have like a lot of uh, if you have like a sound that is really nice and makes you feel good in a way. You have to like use your own intuition what it means. Then you can have a bliss. If you compress it, you can have it differently. That this, this would be bliss comp. I'm not sure if you hear the differences. Okay, so you, now you have DRF, meaning drum riff. Now you can have uh, like it, let's say with a high pass, meaning that you you remove all the lower frequencies, then you get something like this. This is a DRF HP. Now you have an electronic riff. That would be something like this, let's say. This is ERF. Now you have GDRF. I told you what that is. That's guitar plus drum riff. My mistake. Now you have hi hat, H I H D. Now you have a G R F, guitar riff. Now you have S N, meaning snare. 
and that, and you can also have a stick. A stick is less than a snare usually. Uh, now you have, like, say, uh, strings. Well, this is not really a string. I, I guess I kind of like, oh, I didn't think of whether it's cello or the string. Uh, now you have synth. Now you have arpeg, meaning arpeggio. Arpeg and ERF uh, are the same thing. I usually use ERF, arpeg, uh, I don't know why I use that. Ambience. Okay, feedback. FX. Pad. Pin. Pin is like, uh, usually you can hear it in industrial, 80s industrial music. You can hear lots of pins. Uh, now you have acoustic, meaning acoustic guitar of some sort. Uh, no, it's not really the best example for an acoustic guitar, but I didn't look that much. Now you have a chorus, meaning uh, uh, you have like a lot of, well, what is meaning chorus is very useful a lot of times it just gives you uh, other voices to wrap your music with and uh, nothing but a human sound really does the job now you have a uh, clap oh this is a bad clap clap is clap uh, draw a drum roll like this is something that uh, is not really a drum riff. You can play it in a riff, but you can uh, use it to, to uh, like to move from one section to another. Uh, now you have an uh, electronic drum riff. That's E D R F. Now you have hum. That was piano. Now you have reverse. A lot of time you hear sounds that the most uh, useful uh, name for them is reverse, meaning that it's some sound that goes backwards. You don't, just don't know what you would use it for, but it's a lot of times it, yeah, it's really cool to use. And you have tom, tom toms. Oh, this is a bad tom. Uh, you have sounds which I call annoy. This is a sound that are annoying. That's what they are. That's why I call them annoy. Uh, here is another annoy. The annoying. Now you have hell. Hell. Hell sounds. This is like a, you hear it a lot in the Nine Inch Nails. You hear it a lot in the Pesh Mode. You hear it a lot in Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie. It's the sound. That, the sounds that make them cool. Uh, finding hell, good hell sounds is uh, is like mining. Uh, I don't know if this is a good hell sound, but let me, this one. What I'm thinking about when I'm saying hell is like uh, the sound of a crying spirit or something like that. But uh, you have to find the anal your own analogy and uh, then start searching for them. Usually, hell sounds are these are the best sounds best samples ever they can make a song turn it, turn it from crap to great like it doesn't matter how off tune you get with your vocals if you put uh, the right hell sounds it corrects everything this is like uh, magic yeah so like uh, you have to start think when you're working with samples you have to start thinking in these terms this this is your language Okay, this was lesson five.